Have you ever wondered how motion designers organize their projects? Here's five easy tips to get started. Tip number one is keeping all of your projects in the same place. So what I tend to do is have a folder for all of the projects. This would be the projects folder. Within that, I create a new folder for each individual project that I'm working on. And the way that I name it is simply by starting out with a number. So 0001, this is the very first project. And then I'll go up as I increase the amount of projects that I'm working on. This way it's very easy to see the first projects you were doing and you have them in the right order. Then I do a dash, I do the client name and then the project name. So this way it's very easy to see exactly what you're working on and it's easy to find it later on. Within this, I will also organize it in a very specific way. Because if you maintain a specific structure, it's very easy to go back and forth between projects and you'll know exactly where to find the different elements. First of all, I'll create a folder for each individual software that I'll be working in. So let's say I'm working in After Effects, I'll call this AE. Next, I'll create a folder for all of my different assets. And within this folder, I could create another one for audio, one for video, illustrations. It really depends on the project, but this is sort of the main structure. Last but not least, I'll create a folder called deliverables. This is for anything that's final, that needs to be shown to someone else. And it's much better to keep it like this instead of having it all in the main folder, calling it final v1, v2, v3, and all of a sudden it becomes very cluttered. Now that I've created a folder for my project within the finder window, we'll go into After Effects for tip number two, which is all about organizing the project panel. You can see that the project panel is located on the left by default. And what I like to do is organize this even before I start importing anything into my project. But how are we going to organize this? Well, I tend to split it up into three different folders. A folder can be created by right clicking, clicking new folder, or by using the icon down here at the bottom. First of all, I want a folder for my compositions. I'll call this 01-compositions. And the reasoning behind this is that it will always stay on top because it has the 01 tag. Within this folder, I tend to create another one, which is called precoms, And it's for any composition that isn't that important that I don't need to access all of the time. Now for the next one, this is going to be a folder for all of the different assets. And for the final one, this is actually a folder that I don't want to create myself. And let me explain. If you're creating a composition, let's press enter. And I go to layer, new, solid. And I just create a plain solid. You can see that we get a solids folder. Now I want to take this folder, want to press enter. And rename it to 03-solids. And if I press enter here again, you can just see that it asks whether I want to rename the solids folder. So I'll click yes. And now you can see that we have the specific folder for the solids. I can simply go ahead and delete the composition, delete the solid. One final thing you can do if you want to organize it even more is select the assets folder. Here we can create a folder for videos. We can create a folder for graphics and we can create a folder for audio. And by doing this, you're organizing your assets based on what they are, and it will be much easier to find them. If we close this down, we could go ahead and start with our project. Only problem being that you don't want to do this every single time you create a new project. But that's actually an easy way to fix this, and that's by creating a template. So when you have made all of the different folders, just make sure that you don't have any compositions, solids or anything like that. You can go ahead and save this project. I'll go ahead and save it in the projects folder, project number one. I can even save this in the assets as this is going to be a template. I'll just call it AE template and save it. Then I can go to After Effects, Preferences, all the way down to New Project. And here you can see that we can check a box that says New Project Loads Template. So if we do this, you can see that we open up the Finder window again. Here we can select our template press enter, click OK, and now every single time you create a new project, it will start up looking exactly like the template that you chose. So let's try this. Let's go to File, New, New Project, and you can see that we have all of the different folders, even though it's an untitled project. Let's move on to tip number three, which is naming your layers. I have this animation of a simple character that's running. 
And the thing is that right now the layers are not named. This means that when you take a look at the layer panel and the layers themselves, you have no idea which is which. Therefore, the easiest way to organize your layers is simply by naming them. What I like to do is first of all find a layer. I can see if I press U that this controls the up and down movement of the body. So I'll call this the body-movement-null. The reason why I use dashes is that I think it looks a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier to read. And if you start to capitalize certain letters, it can become a bit confusing to read. So I just want to simplify it as much as possible. Also, I make sure that the most important words are first. So this is all about the body, the body being the most important thing. Then it tells me that it's something about a movement. So the body is moving and also it's a null layer. Let's go ahead to the next one. I can see if I press U that this is the squash and stretch layer. So I'll just call this squash dash stretch. Then I'll move on. I can just close this one down. This is the head. Then we have the body. And because this is the front part of the body, I'll name it body dash front. And then for the next one, I can see that I have the back of the body. So body dash back. Then I have the two legs. So this is the leg dash left. And the reason why I use a capital letter here is to underline that it's the left leg. It's very important that you notice whether it's the left or the right leg. And therefore capital letters can be used to emphasize a specific thing within the layer. So this is the left one, which makes this the right one. And last but not least, we have the background. And now if you take a look, it's a lot easier to read what's going on in the timeline. You know what all of the different layers do. Now the only thing that's left is grouping the different layers together. The thing is that the body has two different parts, even the legs have two different parts, and we want to show that these are sort of grouped together. So let's take a look at tip number four, which is all about color coding. So if you select certain layers, then select the color label here to the left, I can select a different color. So let's go for orange here. For the legs, we can go for a green. For the background, I usually tend to set this to none because the background is not as important, so I don't need it to stand out. And now if you take a look, we can all of a sudden read that, oh, these two are together because of the similar colors. And that's also the case for the legs and the two different nulls, which already had that red color. So when you start to use color coding, you start to group different layers together and separate them from each other. And this is very important when you get into more advanced animations. You may have some character animation with 50 to 100 layers. And if you don't name the layers, if you don't color code them, well, it's going to be very difficult to understand what's really going on in the timeline. When it comes to color coding different layers, this is what we have been limited to in the last years of After Effects. But in the 2023 update, they have made it possible to actually color code keyframes. Now this is where it gets really exciting. So if I select all of my layers by pressing Command and Control A, press U to open them up, you can see that I have a lot of different keyframes. Now, especially for character animation, it can become really confusing with this many keyframes. So how do you organize those? Well, you use the new keyframe color code feature. You can see at the start that we have a running animation which keeps on looping and then at the end it all of a sudden stops. So what you could do here and how you could use the color coding feature is either to separate the different properties from each other. You could select a bunch of keyframes, right click, go to label and select a color. That way it's much easier to distinguish certain properties from each other. Now my favorite way of using this is actually a bit different and this is to section out different parts of the animation. As I told you before, the start of this animation is a looping run cycle, but what if we wanted to indicate specifically what's being looped? Now I know from when I animated this that the legs loop in three keyframes, so does the body, and for the rest it loops in five keyframes. So if we select all of that for all of the different keyframes, then we can go ahead and right click, go to label, and then we can select the green label. 
And by doing this, it's very easy to distinct specifically what's the loop. So if I wanted to extend this animation, I would know what keyframes to copy and where to paste them later on. Let's go ahead to the end, because the thing is that when this run cycle ends, as you can see right here, there's a stop animation. So I also want to indicate which part of the animation is this specific stop. You can see right here, if we drag it up and take a look at the keyframes, the stop happens right here when the loop starts to differ. You can see here that the legs stop moving and then the body sort of bounces a bit back and forth. And therefore we can approximately select these keyframes and this would then be the stopping animation. So we can right click, we can go to label and we can select the red color, which indicates stop. Because we have done this, it's now much easier to distinct exactly what the looping part is here at the start. Then we have the main part of the animation and we have the stop here at the end. So let's take a look at what else is animated. You can see there's two more animations. There's one here where he turns his body. We can select those keyframes, right click, and this could be an orange color. And then for the final move here at the very end, you can see he just walks to the right. So we can select those, right click, go to label. And for this one, we can select a yellow color. Okay, so now we have identified the different parts of the animation, but let's make it even clearer exactly what these different color labels mean. The way we can do this is by going to the start of the first group of keyframes. Then we can press our asterisk key to add a marker. If you don't have the asterisk key or the numpad, an easy way to do this is by undoing, going to layer, then markers and simply adding a marker. So if we double click this marker, we can now go ahead and call this the run loop. We can also select the label and because we want it to match with the keyframes, we can go ahead and make this green. Click OK. And now you can see that it's indicated that our green keyframes correspond to the run loop. And we can repeat this process for all of our different sections. And as you can see, now it's much clearer what corresponds to the different sections of animation. And this is a very easy way to organize even your keyframes. Now, when this is all said and done, and we have a final project that we are happy with, we want to save this. The thing is that just saving your project as you normally would is not enough if you want to transfer it to another computer or open it from somewhere else. The thing is that After Effects doesn't automatically take all of the different files that you use and put them together in one package. You have to do that manually. This leads us to tip number five, which is collecting all of your files when your project is done. And the way you do that is by going to File, then you go all the way down to Dependencies, Collect Files, and here you make sure to select that all files are being collected. You can see that nine files are being collected. There are a total of 175 megabytes. Then you click Collect. And here we can select our Projects folder, then the specific project, and what I tend to do here is simply call the folder After Effects. So we can go ahead and do that. And this is just to indicate that the project is final. So press Enter to save it. It will collect all of the different files. Then within our project folder, you can see that we have the new After Effects one. This contains the project file, but it also contains the footage folder with all of the different assets. What I tend to do here is simply select the old AE project folder right click and delete it. And it's just to show that this project is final and all of the files have already been collected. That way, when I go through all of my different projects, I can see those where the files have been collected by the fact that the folder is called After Effects, not AE. Those were the five tips for organizing your projects within After Effects, all the way from creating a project directory to organizing your project tab and creating a template to naming your layers coloring them and coloring your keyframes, and also collecting all of your different files when you're done with a project. If you have any additional tips to add, make sure to post them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you want to get notified about future videos. That's all for now, till next time.